there's a village in the depths of Inner Mongolia called Yamalai. In February 1940, the war would reach this small village and turn into the long-awaited opportunity for Fu Yi to change the tides of this conflict in his favor. In February 1940, Fu Zhuoyi's army entered one of its most difficult periods. His army's headquarters was moved to Yamalai village. The Japanese conquest of Wu Yuan had nearly obliterated Fu's army. They were driven in freezing conditions to hide inside nearby trenches. With starvation rapidly approaching, Fu was determined to motivate his troops. His motto was, hiding will not win the war. To win, you must fight. The entire army had to keep its chin up. They persisted in conducting guerrilla-style attacks on the Japanese, not letting them enjoy a moment's rest. Japanese commander Shigenori Kuroda had assumed that Fu's forces had been wiped out. The Wu Yuan winter is extremely harsh. Temperatures can often dip as low as minus 20 degrees Celsius. Without access to regular supplies, Shigenori Kuroda had every reason to believe that Fu Yi's struggle was futile. But he had made the mistake of underestimating his enemy. Fu and his army were far more resilient than they were given credit for. They had already begun a resurgence. <laughs> 所以他日线要部队在防火南岸的沙河一带和乌家河与南山之间地区埋上了一批粮食和弹药on the 7th of February 1940, Japanese Chief Commander Nazaburo Okabe and Army Chief of Staff Shinichi Tanaka arrived in Wu Yuan. In the Japanese army, chief of staff was a well-respected position. They had the authority to modify the battle plans of army generals. When chief commander Nazaburo Akabe gave orders to retreat from Wu Yuan, Sunichi Tanaka disagreed with the decision. After their initial success, Japanese Central Command was determined, as part of its overall strategy, not to stretch themselves too far. By doing so, they would be able to guarantee that their troops and provisions would be adequately protected and replenished.
。他们说：“那你打完了以后费很大劲，你不占领了有什么意义呢？” And so Shinichi Tanaka played a trick with Nazaburo Akabe. Tianzong, 呢，他越过自己的上司冈部，找到了华北方面军的参谋长利源信雄。Details about Yukio Kasahara's military career were published in the Encyclopedia of Japanese Army Commanders from 2001. Leadership飞到五原了，他就给他陈述，就是我们一定要守守五原。结果另外信雄居然被他打动了，所以就同意他的方案。但是冈部司令官呢，他还是坚持这个不行，因为我们的兵力太单薄了，你再占领一个地方
呃，准备这个、呃、对进入口的日军主力进行一个拒签，而这个时候呢，呃，绥远日军的那个主力呢，就趁五原空突袭，呃，迅速的进占了五原。At 8 a.m. on February the 19th, the guerrilla units from West Sui Yuan mounted a sudden assault on the Japanese, who responded by immediately sending their main units to respond. Not long after, the Chinese forces looked as if they were in trouble. The Japanese, determined to wipe them out once and for all, started pursuing them. This all went according to Fu's plan. Then, an amateurish mistake by the 93rd Regiment ended up derailing everything. This region, is just recently entered Sachu. In the past, the Chinese army is not moving or walking. The average height of a person is around 1.8 meters. When mounted on a horse, that turns into about 2.5 meters in height. From such a height, it was hard to see what lay behind the low-lying hills. The Japanese army had vehicles that gave their soldiers a view of the battlefield from a height of four meters. This was sufficient to see beyond the dunes. 果然呢，就是这个九十三团自卫隐蔽的很好。但是呢，日军经过时候就发现了他，结果呢，呃，就陷入了被动的一个局面。The trap was thus rendered ineffective, and Chunshan's 93rd Regiment was forced to beat a retreat as the engagement turned into a chaotic mess. 因为是在开阔地作战，而安春山的部队的事先有没有来得及构筑工事，所以日军的半机械化部队一上来。他的坦克和火炮一轰了以后呢，安春山的部队伤亡比较大。这时候，安春山想的办法是让部队玩命的接近日军，搅在一起，这样呢，日军的火力就没办法发挥它的优势，最大限度的降低了日军机械化部队的火力优势。尽管如此呢。安春山的九十三团伤亡惨重。Even though the Japanese army had gained the upper hand, An Chunshan's 93rd Regiment put up a brave fight. The original plan of reinforcing the 93rd Regiment with the 91st and 92nd Regiments had failed. Even Deng Shi Wu's 101st Division wasn't able to join in the ambush. The trap turned into a chaotic, bloody mess. Dared, dared, 呢？日军突然他他醒悟了啊！傅作义他是在佯攻，哎，真正的意图是要攻打这个五原城，哎，呃，于是这个日军啊，他立即他就是收缩兵力啊，回到五原城啊。这个时候，傅作义。原来计划让绥远游击军呃攻城的这个计划，它就落空了。One wrong move and the game can be lost. With two traps backfiring, Fu would pay a heavy price for his hasty planning. On the 26th of February 1940, 
Fu organized a banquet for his remaining soldiers. This meal in Yamalai village consisted of lamb, rice, eggs and meat served as a belated New Year's celebration. While they enjoyed their meal, a telegram arrived from Chiang Kai-shek. Fuzhou Yu 接到电报，说当时的第八战区的司令长官朱朝良，因为身体的原因，要让傅作义过去接替他担任这个职务。那么这个从这个名义上来讲，对傅作义的话，他是一个提拔，很好。但是他的这些兄弟们，跟着他转战南北的这些兄弟，心里边就有些想法了。那他的以后的未来的出路在哪里呢？所以说这样一来呢。傅作义呢，他也是觉得有点进退两难。After several defeats in West Sui Yuan, Chiang Kai-shek was considering the possibility of abandoning the Eighth War Zone. Fu knew that by accepting this promotion, he would be gaining something at the expense of his beleaguered 35th Army. He also knew that if he followed this order, West Sui Yuan would fall entirely to the Japanese. Fu held an emergency meeting to discuss the issue. A heated discussion ensued. Some suggested an immediate attack, seeing that the Japanese commander had retreated and left only a small section of the Japanese army in Wu Yuan. Strike while the iron is hot, they advocated. Some suggested reorganizing the army. Although opinions differed on the best course of action going forward, they were unanimous in rejecting Chiang Kai-shek's suggestion that the Eighth War Zone be abandoned. Fu Zhuoyi finally decided on a concrete plan for the future. They were to stand against the Japanese conquest of the area and hold their ground in West Sui Yuan. He immediately contacted Chiang Kai-shek, stating that generals do not leave their soldiers, and soldiers must stand their ground. Only in this way do the soldiers have a leader, and the land can be retained. We will protect our land with our lives. We will fight to the bitter end. Fu Zhuoyi gave orders to assemble the army together for further military training. They were to train in preparation for the next battle. They would recruit more soldiers, horses, obtain artillery, and try to take back Wu Yuan within a month. When the citizens in Wu Yuan received news of Fu's plan to stay, they organized to distribute food, fuel, and help recruit new volunteers for the army. Fu also had help from the Communists' Eighth Route Army. All of this support renewed his confidence that a victory would soon be his. Through one of his informants, Fu Zhuoyi learned what he was up against in Wu Yuan. The Japanese army had retained one infantry and one artillery company, as well as military police and other units, totaling more than 10,000 soldiers. After his brutal defeat, Fu had learned the value of extreme caution and meticulousness. Although it appeared his army was stronger in some ways and had ample provisions, he had to be sure that he could win and retake Wu Yuan. After an attack, the Japanese would surely send for reinforcements from Baotou and other strongholds. Fu would first send out some units to attack the Japanese that were stationed between Baotou and Wu Yuan. The Communist 8th Route Army guerrillas would prove invaluable in clearing them from the area.
，共产党主要绑的他就是，呃，也是破坏铁路、破坏这个交通线，还有就是这个，呃，组织的这个游击队骚扰这个日军，就帮助傅作义钳制这个他的后续援助的兵力。Fu, however, felt that this was still not enough. Even with the help of the guerrillas, it would still be very difficult to defeat the Japanese mechanized units. He spent hours ruminating over this problem. How was he going to confront the menacing Japanese army with its reinforcements? He was then inspired by the natural conditions along the Yellow River. With the coming of spring, he knew that the frozen river would soon begin to thaw. A frozen river meant no ships could be used, and while the frozen ground melted, it would be hard to get around the area on foot. He predicted he'd have a window of seven or eight days. If he could just use the thawing river to stop the Japanese mechanized reinforcements, then the forces occupying Wu Yuan would be trapped and helpless. With this as his inspiration, Fu started examining the banks to the east of Wu Yuan. Fu's strategy not only took into consideration his troops, but the day, the seasons, the terrain, as well as the environment. He also had another strategy, the strike team. 掏心战术本身是一种初步具备现代特种作战雏形的一种战法，它是通过非常精干的一支勇猛的部队，哎，攻敌之要害，主要是指挥和通信枢纽，哎，来瘫痪敌人，使敌人呢进入一种混乱状态。He would once again appoint An Chunshan, commander of the main force. Under his command was also an elite strike force of 500 crack troops. They were waiting for the order to move, which would come at any moment. Fu Zhuo Yi was once again mobilizing his troops for an attack on Wu Yuan. First, he would disrupt enemy communications and then block enemy reinforcements. The Japanese would be beaten back. Join us for the next part of the winter counteroffensive.